for those of you that enjoy listening to music and you want to go back in your teens and listen to some of that music you used to listen to when you are a teenager, there is this web website called the Nost Nostalgia, 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 whatever that is, uh, something machine. Anyway, this website, the cool thing about it is you can go back and choose a year. Like, for example, if you guys remember uh, when you were teenagers, maybe 13, 14, 15, right? Choose that year and then it will populate for you the songs that were like the top songs for that um, for those times. I think it's really interesting. Uh, I, I was trying it out and I found it interesting because memories all of a sudden just came back listening to some of the music I used to listen to when I was still a teenager. Seriously speaking, why on earth would anyone want to make me sweat at the beginning of my day? Look at all that space. Okay, this is to those of you that are new drivers because I think this is probably done mostly by new drivers. When you are uh, unhooking from your trailer and you're putting your trailer down, you don't need to crack it all the way up. When you let your landing gear down, when the landing gear touches the ground, if you just want to be sure, at least just roll it one more time, that's it. All you need to do is you make sure that when you are leaving the truck, use this right here. This is called the SAP Air, but all it does, it when you hit it this side like that, air will be taken out of your airbags this is gonna come down and then you can slide away It's hot out there. And yet today it's not that bad. But it's still hot. I don't know if you guys have like some like maybe stories or songs or specific things that you kind of remember in your teen years. For me, there is this one story um, that I was just thinking about that I remember uh somebody telling us a story in when i was a, a teenager i don't remember exactly how old I, I was but that story made such an impact on my life that i've never forgotten it
right, so I'm here. That's the place I'm going to. That right there. So let's go check in, see what they have to say. Hopefully they give us a door right away. What happened? I hope it's not a truck driver that hit him. They've given me a door, uh, but it's gonna be in the back, so I need to turn around and go to the back. I'm gonna go in door number nine. I'm trying to figure out how to turn around from here. Uh, Probably I can go through this, that driveway right there. I'm gonna see if there's a driveway in front of that DCS JB Hunt and then see if I can drive through in there. Come out from there because I'm gonna go all the way at the end of the building and then go in the back. Get out on this side and then go behind the building. This is me right here. The nostalgia machine did not remind me of this but I remember during my teen years uh, hearing a story I don't remember exactly how old I was but I know it was in my teen years um, I heard of this story that kind of stuck with me and um, I still remember it even up to this time it's a story of a man um, that loved his wife so much that he determined that he was gonna do his best to make sure that he provides for his wife and children and so this guy would wake up early in the morning go to work he was really a hard worker and he would come back very late at night tired he was making a lot of money he became rich he provided for his wife and children they did not lack anything he built them a very good big house bought them cars, was paying for the tuition for the school fee, I mean the tuition for the children. I mean they did not lack anything because um, he had determined that he's going to love his, uh, because he loved his wife so much, he's going to provide for anything and everything that they needed. So after some good years, uh, all of a sudden the wife tells him that he she, she needed a divorce. She was she wasn't happy with the marriage and she wanted to to just thro throw in the towel and the man could not understand why i mean he was like why don't you love me i've 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 done everything for you i've been working so hard i wake up early in the morning come back late working to provide for you and the children i've given you everything you want all of a sudden you are leaving me why don't you love me and the wife told him listen I love you but um, you don't love me and the man is like what are you talking about 
how can you say I don't love you when you see all this stuff that I've given you and the wife told him you see that's the problem you you think I love the stuff I don't love the stuff it's you that I love but you are never at home we never talk you wake up very early in the morning by the time you come back you are tired you are you just want to go to bed we never spend time together because you are uh, you are always working and so the very thing that the man was doing thinking that he was showing his love was the very thing that was causing the woman to leave because the woman loved the man not the staff and yet the man thought by providing all this stuff he was showing the woman that um, he loved her and that story has stayed for me uh, ever since I had it in my 10 years and I think the reason why is because it's kind of like a simple story but yet it's complex in its own way it's not i mean because i think when i had it even as a young boy uh by young meaning as a teenager um i think i could relate with a man because in my mind i was thinking well what is this woman talking about the man loved him he has done everything given him everything and all of a sudden he's, uh, she's saying he doesn't love him. Uh, I think I could relate with uh, the man, but yet at the same time I could kind of understand why the woman was leaving because it's not the staff that she had fallen in love with, but it is the man that um, she had fallen in love with and the man was never at home. So I could kind of understand both sides and I think that's what made an impact to the point that that story has stayed with me. Over the years, I've had many people and many stories that kind of relate to the same story. Now, I don't know if that story was a true story or somebody had just made it, made it up because it was a story. Uh, somebody was telling it uh, because they were preaching and so they gave it as an example. I don't know if it was true or if it was just a made up story, but I've had uh, many stories kind of the same version uh, where um, uh, families have broken up just because the man thought uh, he was showing love by going out and providing working hard and yet at the end of the day the woman feels like they are not loved and I've also had the stories uh, that story in um, in trucking where um, the husband will leave the home they go out to work maybe they are over the road doing their best to provide for the family and yet the family falls apart so that story comes in a number of ways and for me I think it's um, it's kind of a wake-up call it's something that I always think about because I know it's very easy for for us as men to be caught up in wanting to provide for the family and yet forget to spend time with the family so it's something that I always uh, try to come back to and uh, evaluate my life and see where I stand in uh, in relation to my wife and, and children because I don't want I don't want to to be caught up in trying to um, um, to pursue stuff that is not is not as valuable as I may think. So uh, this material stuff is not a big deal as we think. So I just wanted to share that with you to encourage you, especially because I know most of you are guys, are men. Um, every now and then take inventory of your life, check with, uh, with your family and your spouse, your children, trying to make sure that you don't give up the most important things for the things that are not that important so um, as I share this with you it's more for my own benefit just to remind myself uh, to take inventory of my my relationships especially with my wife and children because I want to make sure that uh, at the end of that day I'm really paying attention to the thing that matters most all this stuff like the money and the material thing they have their their place in life
but we just have to make sure that we don't put them above our relationships. You don't want to be chasing after the money and all this other stuff and then lose those relationships that are important to you. So just wanted to share that with you. I don't know if it will bless somebody, but it's something that um, I personally always remember that story. I had it as a teenager, but it left an impact that I always come back to it and think about it and always want to make sure that um, uh, I'm not putting anything above my wife, above my children, uh, above my relationship with God, above the people that I care about the most. And so I just wanted to encourage you with that, that uh, pay attention to, to the things that really, really matter to you, the things that are really, really important, the things that are, are lasting than the things that are replaceable or things that don't last. I'm done. I've been here for about two hours. So now I'm going to close and I'll get out of here.